first up, I'd like to talk to uh, Ash Kazarian. You are the Director of Civil Liberties at Tech Freedom. Uh, Tech Freedom is a 501c3. That means that uh, your organization does not participate in lobbying efforts. So Ash is here to provide us with a legal analysis of the Earn It Act. Welcome, Ash. Thank you for having me. I'll try to keep this short, uh, but I want to give an overview of what's happening. The Earn It Act has been something that's been in the works for uh, almost a year now from Senator Graham's office. And we have multiple statements from Senator Graham saying that one of his targets is definitely encryption. So, you know, we have it on the record to begin with. Um, then if we look at just kind of the history of how these conversations and discussions were being had, the Attorney General Barr has also uh, many times stated that encryption, end-to-end -end encryption, is something they're after that it um, stops them from getting into places, the lowless spaces they want to get into. Uh, what they're obviously forgetting is that end-to-end -end encryption protects a lot of vulnerable population. It protects people all around the world, including in the United States, especially if you look at the reality that we live in right now. Um, the Signal app has been downloaded so many times since the Black Lives Matter protest started. And there is a reason for that. People are seeking end-to-end -end encryption. They're seeking to protect themselves and their privacy. Now going into the Earn It Act and what it does and what it does not. Again, I'll try to keep this very simple. Um, there's one something to be said about Section 230, which the Earn It Act amends. Section 230 does not protect companies from liability for violating federal criminal law. That already exists. And already on the books in federal criminal law, we have, um, you know, liability for spreading child pornography or uh, child abuse materials. So obviously what this bill is doing, using that cause, you know, that very obviously important for all of us cause of protecting the children is actually going after uh, our free speech, our privacy, and after tech companies. Uh, so one thing I would want to mention uh, is the current version of the bill, because there have been many different resurrections of this bill. But the one that we have right now that was voted out of a committee has the Leahy Amendment. Senator Leahy has tried to put kind of a patch on the encryption question. Unfortunately, we don't think it was enough for us to think that the threat to the encryption was gone. Um, there were multiple reasons for that. Number one is um, basically what the amendment does. It, it says that you cannot be liable for having an encrypted service as a tech plat as a platform or as a website or service. But what that is, is that's a defense. So you would have to go to court to say, oh, no, 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 like here, here, here are we proving that encryption is actually not part of the reason you want to go after us. So that's number one. Consistent federal litigation is gonna put a very big strain on all these providers. And some of them, especially the newer startups, for example, might not even want to use encryption, putting everyone's privacy and interests at risk. Number uh, two, which is, I think, very important, and what we have seen happen after sesta Foster was passed, was the fact that it's going to make investigating crimes against children, right, the spread of child uh, abuse materials, way harder because the criminals, the people who should be found responsible, they're going to move to the dark web. We're, we already see that law enforcement is underfunded, and they don't even do a good job of, you know, investigating these crimes. And punishing those who are guilty. Moving this to the dark web is going to make it even harder to investigate, especially for departments who don't have enough um, money or technologists to understand what the dark web is. Whereas when you have, uh, you know, big platforms, small platforms who are uh, operating and collaborating with law enforcement like they are right now, it's a way easier task for them. But if you put the threat of liability on them, they're not going to do it. We saw that happen after SESTA and FOSTA passed. Huge chunks of internet, like websites were just shutting down big parts of it because they didn't want to deal or fight for this because they didn't want the liability and we understand why they wouldn't. They don't want to be associated with this. And one last thing I want to mention is um, the Leahy Amendment was used as this kind of get out of jail free card. Um, look, we figured out the encryption situation. We even pulled um, the Lawful Access to Encrypted Data Act that also was championed by Senator Graham, they're not even pushing that. Um, it's kind of like a bait and switch. Look, we're not going after encryption anymore, except earn it as it is. 
Um, and I think the logic of we keep amending this bill so it's better doesn't work because the substance is not better. That's, uh, that's a great explanation. Thank you very much, Ash. I just want to clarify one thing and ask you a follow up if you have a moment. Uh, I saw that uh, Tech Freedom has a statement, uh, it's not from you, but it is from your organization that says, as introduced, the Earn It Act would actually make it harder to stop the spread of child sexual abuse materials while also limiting the First Amendment rights of adults to access lawful content and use secure services for private communications. Now, I think that's what you just covered. And if I understand what you're saying correctly, it's that what the Earn It Act does is it removes legal protections for tech companies and websites and apps so that they can uh, be sued by people. And what that's going to result in doing is, is these tech companies are going to um, stop posting encrypted communications because of liability. They're going to uh, squelch free speech on their platform as well because they don't want to invite lawsuits and have to prove that they're not guilty uh, because that's costly and dangerous to their business. And as a result then, that's going to drive people who are doing difficult activities, illegal activities to the dark web, to different places where they're going to be harder for law enforcement to identify and harder for them to stop. Is that correct? Right. And um, I guess I just assumed and jumped right into the Section 230 for those uh, who are joining us who don't know what Section 230 is and what we exactly are fighting for. Section 230 are, as Jeff, Professor Jeff Koss have put, the 26 words that created the internet. Um, Section 230 uh, basically says that platforms are not liable for third party content. So let's say Twitter is not liable for what I say on Twitter. Um, and again, as I said in the beginning, federal criminal laws are exempt from Section 230. Um, so these carve outs, just like we've seen with SESTA FOSTA, which was a bill that was uh, claiming to protect victims of sex trafficking. Um, and by the way, to this day, we have not seen a single prosecutor use that bill to go after you know, those who were guilty of this. Um, but at the same time, we've seen parts of internet be shut down and uh, other horrible consequences that I think my other panelists are gonna cover. Um, and the other thing is even the threat of liability for a lot of um, platforms and websites, it creates this incentive to over moderate. And that also pushes you know, the free speech needle definitely in the wrong direction. They over moderate uh, they even use algorithms to just kind of take down content that they think would get them in trouble because no one wants that liability. No one wants that mark of, you know, being associated with such terrible crime. 